Can you guys believe it? I can't. I know. I'm shocked <laughs> every, time every time it happens, there she is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Agnes Vivarelli is in the house here to talk. We're talking Joseph Murphy today. And he's got some really crazy stuff. I guess he was one of those, what, Goddard friends or whatever. He's like in the little community of the, the he's, Goddard. Um, yeah, he's Whoa. definitely in the old school. Whoa, no, no, no. Group. Put that back up. Put that back up. The cosmic power within you. This is a is it like nineteen seventies. What is what is going on with that? Did you get a free like little shag rug uh, with that? Maybe maybe I got a, a bag brown, of granola. Brown couch and some orange cushions. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's lovely. That so we're going to kick part. off. We're going to kick off today. I'm going to read a little story, and then we are going to break down the mechanics of this, Dan. What's he talking about? What's the mechanics even? I would just hmm. Dr. Joseph Mersby right now in my mind. This is the subject of collapsing space and time, which I Whoa. always have been fascinated with. That is awesome. So okay. now an engineer once told me he was trying hard for a promotion, but that since others in the organization had priority over him in years of service, he supposed he would have to wait perhaps several years. This engineer also had a pilot's license and a few planes for research purposes from Los Angeles to New York and other cities. I asked him how long the flight to New York would take. And he said, oh, by jet, less than five hours. So what he did was he collapsed 3,000 miles of space into five hours or less. The old horse and wagon might have done it in 18 months. Our mathematicians and scientists are pointing out that time and space are one and correlated and that when we collapse time, we collapse space. I told him frankly that he promoted himself, but first he would have to remove the barricade and stumbling blocks which, b blocks which were there in his own mind, preclusions such as others are ahead of me and I will have to wait several years. For about five minutes, morning and evening, he quieted his mind and he imagined his wife saying to him, darling, I'm delighted about your promotion and your increase in salary. It's wonderful. He felt her embrace and he sensed the reality and the naturalness of her voice, her gestures and her expression of joy. In a few weeks time, he realized his cherished goal and at this writing, he is working on his ideal project doing top secret work with the increase in prestige and an enormous increase in salary. So he collapsed space and time. And I love that how Joseph Murphy described that collapsing that space from what would have taken a horse and wagon 18 months. It took five hours. And this is the thing that we too can do with the desire that we have, whatever our desire is. And what he did was he removed the limitations that he had of others are ahead of me and I'll have to wait several months or I'll have to wait several years. He removed that. That was what was holding him apart from his desire. So you can collapse space and time between you and your desire, whatever it is, by looking at what the obstacles are. In this case, the obstacles were very obvious and then you remove them through an imaginal scene, by living in the end, by imagining, hearing something, in this case, his wife. I love that example. It's such a great thing. The space and time can be collapsed. So if we look at, then some specific examples of, say, somebody wanting, what example have, would you like to work with today? I have, I have two things. I Good. Like Go ahead. Work. First and foremost, for all of you out there that didn't think it was possible for me to be quiet for as long as I just was. <laughs> not bad. What's not going bad. on? Are you sick? No, I, I was sick? listening. I was really <laughs> enjoying what you were saying. And I was laughing. I'm like, there's probably people that are literally like, Dan hasn't said a word. And it's like been like three minutes. How did I you know start? you're going to shock everybody. Come on. So I want to share a personal example of where yeah. this happened. And it wasn't even me trying to consciously do it. And I think that's part of it, by the way. Um, but, uh, when I was at the company I'm at now, uh, the first time, uh, they went through a little moment where they decided they were going to fire everybody where I was located, lay us yeah. all off, but they wanted us to stick around long enough to help us with the shutdown. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, uh, F you guys, F you guys bad. I don't, I don't even care about you guys. And uh, <laughs> I certainly don't like your family. Right. Like it was a very bitter, very unhappy. So I called a friend that had been pestering me for eons at a really good company. Yeah. 
and hit me up forever to come do some support work. And I was like, I don't really want to be logged into a phone, but whatever the hell. So I finally called her up. I said, Hey, you know, I'm Connie, I'm interested in coming back. And she goes, Oh man, like I, you know, I, I'd love to, but I, uh, I just hired a guy and I'm like, ah, no worries. Just let me know when stuff's up. I mean, the company I was at, they offered me money to stick around for a year to help them. So I'm like, eh, whatever. So I just kind of let it go. Literally, literally <laughs> like two days later, she called me back up and said, well, you won't believe it, but I just had a dude that just quit my team. Are you still interested? And I said, absolutely. So literally within two days of just me, like, yeah, I know this is going to happen. And I think that was really the difference is I, this was a friend of mine. This was a great company. The money was going to be good enough. I knew it was a good way to go. It was a solid, you know, it was a solid, you know, there was a safety net for me. I I was, it was a guaranteed way I could pay my mortgage. Mm. So I knew I was going to get it. It wasn't an issue. Everything was fine. I had no worries. There was no importance to it. I I didn't elevate it, right? It was none of those things. It was a very... I knew I could do this kind of thing and I let it go. And literally within two days, the dilemma of guy quitting happened. And I feel like that kind of is part of that time thing where usually if someone tells you, for example, that, Oh yeah, well I got to wait for someone to quit. That implies instantly. This is going to be a while, Mm. but it doesn't have to be. And I really think that's kind of the point of what Goddard's saying is this Goddard or Joseph Murphy? Have, Joseph? Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, Joseph Murphy. But this impression we have about this distance, time, space obstacle is really an imaginary. It, it's a. It's not real. It's 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 a perceived obstacle. When really you're not trying to manifest through the obstacle, you're trying to manifest on the other side already. Yeah. Which means the way around, through, under, over you know, the obstacle is not a part of the equation in this example. And you close that gap of improbability. And I think time is one that a lot of us add that shouldn't be. And I think that's, what's brilliant about what he's talking about is it's, it's a component that so many of us will say, well, one day, or this will happen in the future or when I'm older or Mm. down the road or right. And like a lot of us do kind of add that, layer Mm. to our belief and i kind of feel like joseph murphy's kind of saying no no don't don't do that don't 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 do that focus on the thing that you're trying to do like it's now whenever it happens it happens okay let's let's put that out there i don't want to you know try to tell you you're going to manifest uh 1.6 manifestations per month right Mm. i don't know what your speed is i don't know how fast you're going to do this but like, put it out there. That's the thing you're creating. It's going to be created. I don't know when. Tomorrow, next day, 15 days. I, it's up to you. But, but do you think, Dan, because the timing of you calling her, was that, an, was that an intuition? Because your timing was amazing. If you hadn't called her, you wouldn't have planted the seed in her head. So no, when the thing happened. Just, they had just laid me off, too. Like, or just mm. told us. Like, it was all at the same time. Yeah, and I think it was just life being perfect timing and having good relationships with people. So maybe to your point, yeah. I mean, mm. but it was, it was just one of those things where something that I felt I was suddenly going to have to wait or it's like, huh, I wonder if there's another option. Is this a fork in the road? Like mm. I ask all the questions everyone else asks when they're trying to manifest something and you get a weird roadblock. Yeah. But I was like, nah, whatever. It's going to work out. And yeah. that's ultimately what you get down to. Is yeah. Whatever this perceived problem <clears throat> is, and in this case, it's that, that limitation on collapsing space and time. That's huge. Like they yeah. live in a different place. It's a different time. It's down the road. Like you're collapsing. I, I mean, I want to hear more from you and your thoughts. I, mean, I feel like I'm rambling here, but I, I just love the idea that mm. you're closing that gap. You're removing mm. those restrictions. You're, yep. as I've said in a video I did not long ago, don't mess with the middle ground. You're taking out the middle ground. Don't worry about that. It'll, it'll work itself out. This end result where you're at now. Okay. The rest is going to. It's a, it's a line. It might zigzag, whatever. You'll get there. Don't worry about how it happens. That's the fun part. Actually, when you look back on it, and yeah. you're like, you know, this manifested this way. And then my friend called me and she had a pa- uh, a place I could stay at and the cat sit. Like I, I love bringing up that example. I've, I've, you liked that one, didn't I you? I love the crap out of that example. <laughs> so yeah, I just think it's awesome. I, I yeah. think it's powerful. And I think yeah. a lot of people forget that. Hmm. I think when we get fixated on the how and when, 
that's where we get stuck. Whereas Joseph Murphy showed by when you take out, because I mean, I can see why the guy said that those comments were logical under the conditions of being in that job and observing reality. But law of attraction and imagination and, you know, Neville Goddard's techniques or whatever techniques you want to use, they're not about reality. They're about you just literally jumping into where you want to be. And if you can let go of the how and when, the better you get at letting go of the how and when, the more astounding the manifestations can be. What's funny to me is uh, so many of us will manifest amazing things. This happens to many of us. I promise uh, people that are watching this right now and you'll manifest something and you'll ascribe all sorts of other reasons for it. Like you said, well, I, I happened to time it right. Like it was just at that moment I was finally asking for it. And then all of a sudden this guy happened to be putting in his notice. He wasn't going to, but something was going on in his family. So now all of a sudden, right. We, we pass it off as some sort of, yeah, it just worked out that way because of some coincidence. Yeah. And we forget that, no, that coincidence is what you just manifested basically. Mm. Like that, that is what you created. It, all of a sudden, this guy's life had a situation open up that worked for him and his family and what they were trying to do and all that, right? And, and because of that, mm. now all of a sudden, this other thing happened, which now made it possible for you to have your dream. Exactly. Right? Make, make people that are in third parties as an example, right? They're in third party. You know, every time I go on Instagram, they're right. It's like, I got you. I get you. But it doesn't mean they're going to stay together. Like that's ridiculous mm. to think that way. Mm. Obviously that's not going to happen. Whatever the case is, whatever the reasons, let those work themselves out. Mm. Collapse that space and time, not to try to get away from the topic, but collapse that, like get rid of that as a concept like that. Mm should be closed up in a black hole and, you know, sucked out into some other dimension. Don't worry about it. It's gone. And, uh, and I don't think <laughs> is it maybe too vulgar. Sucked out into another sucked dimension. Sucked out into the old anus of the black hole, the bottom <laughs> part, the dirty part of the business of the black hole. You know it. God knows what comes out of that. I think it could get dirty little bits of light residue. Who knows what's going <laughs> Oh my geeks. I'm just going to continue eating my cheese. Sure. Sorry to yeah, be no, eating. No, no, I, don't let me interrupt you. I just I, had the Q and A, and I haven't, I haven't had a been off to. the computer for. I, yeah, and I just like so you, like, you know, Dan. What is that? Now we were talking about no dairy. It's vegan cheese. Oh, that's that fake cheese. It's so not it's real, you, but it's. Do you by chance no have a blowtorch? This is what we were joking about. But you, because I was vegan for a while. Do you by chance have a blowtorch handy so we could demonstrate to the audience how it is <laughs> whether it melts? How it is impossible to melt it. I haven't like tried. literally have said I, you could shoot a piece of cheese at the freaking sun it would bounce off the sun and come back exactly how it was exactly it would be the same piece of cheese, cheese. it was before uh, it's delicious yeah. though don't get me wrong and it's healthy I know, I got you. i'm not trying to don't need to kill anything mess in the eggs whatever the dairy milk the cow whatever you don't want to do any of that i'm just saying but it's wonderfully vegan you know, that's that goes back to the cow udder picture that we drew the other the other <laughs> thing we were talking about the other thing <laughs> but this whole collapsing space yeah. and time yes. thing i think joseph murphy really explains it the best i've ever heard well, okay. by i love that analogy of the horse and cart taking that much time and yet if you do it with another mode and in you if you can if you can use that mode of transport to flip it into a technique which is using a technique to then help you collapse space and time now the techniques that come to mind are literally like he did those thoughts are your beliefs he didn't say this but what he's saying in that example is those thoughts you had are beliefs and those beliefs are a handbrake to you getting the job is basically what Joseph was saying, this guy. So you can use that as a, tr you can trace that, use that to trace over it and say, okay, what am I doing? Like this guy in the story, what beliefs am I holding about my desire that I've just kind of stuck there? 
that are holding me back and I'm actually taking the horse and cart route to my desire rather than, excuse me, taking the plane. How can I take the plane and get, if you do want to get there faster, how can I identify the beliefs I hold that are holding me on the horse and cart and identify what, and I think there's usually a good, like that guy, there's usually a good top two beliefs that hold you in place. I think without a doubt, so many of us hold different beliefs. I mean, like we've kind of given examples, but you know, they're in another country. When I hear, uh, we've got a, a yeah. pretty large following in India, but they talk about, well, he's supposed to get married to someone else, mm. or, right? Like there's the, all these beliefs. Now I will say, I mean, just to speak to that one specifically, just because that's what everyone does doesn't necessarily mean that's what you have to do. I mean, yeah. I know it may not go with the culture, but True. you know, people talk about not, you know, they feel like they have to do these things, but you really don't. So mm. that's a great collapse of space and time concept in my mind where you're taking something that in your mind is a restriction Yes, and you're looking at it and you're like, well, does this really have to be a restriction? What, yeah. Is my mom going to hunt me down and kill me if I, if I don't choose to do this? I mean, I, yeah. I doubt it would be that restriction. She might be mad at you for a very long time mm. and you might have to move out maybe. Who knows, right? Like there could be some things. I get you. I get some, some consequences. consequences. Yeah. But doesn't mean there's not options. And mm. I think a lot of times people get very struck like, well, I can't do it because, you know, it's off the table. Ah. Yeah. Like, well, that's a belief that you hold right now you know kind of made me think it would be a fun little meditation concept maybe and, and you can feel free to borrow it or steal it or have it or whatever but i was kind of thinking like if you've got a a blockage a restriction third party whatever yeah. you think like someone that's currently got the job like this dude that mm. uh, was was traveling and you know uh if you've got a situation where there's something that is keeping you from your next step i envision it I don't know, this is the image I saw. Envision it almost walking out to in the into the the surf, right? You've got the crashing surf coming in, right? Having it walk out, and as the wave eventually cra uh, crashes over it, like maybe it survives a couple of those, but eventually the wave crumbles, and away it goes. Yeah. And it's like you kind of envision it sort of being washed away, being mm. closed up, kind of. It's a way of broken down. Yeah, getting it oh, out I of have. your way. And I think it's a kind of a healthy, natural kind of nature does its own way to yep. kind of remove obstacles, however that may be. Mm. And I felt like that was kind of a fun little mental mm. image that we could kind of get on board with and start imagining whatever this problem is. Maybe they live in another country. So you, you wash, I don't know, maybe you see, I mean, the country is harder, but maybe you see like, you know, when the wave crashes and suddenly the country, <laughs> the country gets closer or something. I don't know. I mean, whatever the case <laughs> have fun with the analogy but yeah it works for people yeah. works for things it works yeah. for a sandcastle right like you'll wash the sandcastle get yes. washed away so it's yeah. that concept of it will erode itself away mm. whatever your blockage is mm. it's perceived more in your mind as an obstacle than yeah. anywhere else it's not real it's mm. real in your mind only and mm. that's what he's talking about is we're trying to remove that limitation that exists inside our brains only that i can't do that i yeah. can't possibly lose yeah weight. I can't possibly pass that test i can't possibly get my degree at 50 i can't possibly yeah. do like whatever your can't is mm. or not able to that's a limitation that's yeah that's all it is and no i'm not saying that just sprinkle some fairy dust on it and talk positive words and all of a sudden your life's going to be better no it's probably a little deeper than that you yeah. might be some choices to make some things to do different and some fairy dust and positive words but It'll be a little larger than that's my point. Yeah. Have you got any examples where you had a negative belief about something that you wanted to manifest and then you changed, you did it like the Joseph Murphy, you changed the belief and then the end result changed? <laughs> Try, like I've had a, a lot of, uh, one thing I've done a lot is where I've manifested both, where I've manifested the negative and then I'm like, <laughs> oh, whoops. Yeah. Uh, and, and then tried to, and then re-manifested. Um, there was... Well, I, okay. So I don't know. I, maybe this is a bad example. This just popping in my head. So if I'm spinning something, I apologize, but it's, um, there was a point where I was trying to get a job. It was again around the same time, by the way, and an older company that I'd worked at that I'd pretty much already run all the stuff I was going to learn from that place. 
uh, there was a potentiality to go back to that company, get a nice bump and pay, a significant bump and pay from even the job that I was going to go where I called my friend. And everything was kind of moving down that path. I went in and interviewed and went interviewed with the VP of the company, like the big wigs. I was, it was done. I was like, life was looking pretty groovy. And for some reason, whatever the case was, they decided not to go with me. And it was one of those things where I was like, huh, that's really weird. I really want to, you know, I wanted the more money. Yeah. And so as it played out, ended up at the company where I ended up, spent a year there, learned stuff that I never, ever thought I would learn, got to build systems with building Oracle stuff, working on all these different Windows servers, like just all sorts of crazy technological stuff that I hadn't ever had a chance to really, really sink my hands into and play with. Yeah. Got all this experience. And then after that, it kind of spun back into where I'm at now. And it was all that stuff that I created during that last year actually led up to the bigger outcome, which was ultimately from where I was at uh, this next step, I got a 34% raise in pay. Yeah. That was always the thing I was trying to manifest was larger, larger income. And so as these changes were occurring in my life, I would always look at them like, well, here's a chance for things to kind of bump to the next level. Yeah. And it was one of those where frick, it's going to take me a while to get to that level. Right. Cause I was doing 5% raises, 12% raises. And I really wanted to kick it up a notch. I got kind of got tired of playing this little nickel and dime BS. Yes. Right? Like I wanted to step, <clears throat> step a few stages past. So from all of the things of putting the energy into that, seeing the lifestyle changes, seeing the things that were different, really truly manifesting it and just kind of letting go and saying, all right, universe, I don't know how the money's coming, but bring it right. Like I, I know it's, I've been focused that it's going to come through a job. Let's see it happen. And you know, the job part was still part of it, but the way that kind of played out was still super crazy cool. And again, the way it played out and I ended up with a giant, I mean, it was like a 34%. It was a huge ass raise. It was just giant. When I told my boss, I was leaving the company. She was like, what are they paying you? And I told her and she's like, oh yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> she's like, okay. you wouldn't ever be able to come back. And I'm like, I know I'd have to come back to like sales or something. Never hope to make money like that. But it was, again, it was just a, a manifested yeah. a giant leap. In nice. my, in my, and I'm working from home, which has made it easy to record. And Lovely. I started dating the lady I'm with now, which has given me time to actually have to be able to date when before there was travel involved and yeah. you know, traffic and just getting home and just, so like a lot of things. It all dominoed. Yeah, yeah. It was just a big change that worked in so many levels. So again, it was one of those, you can collapse a lot of things into one thing maybe, or maybe it's, again, it's what it comes down to in my mind is it, restrictions that we think exist are just in our mind. They are not real. Yeah. No matter what they are. I mean, I, I would assume even so far as if, if you've got some sort of, you know, paralysis, even like, oh, I can't ever move around. It's like, well, technology might allow you abilities to move in ways that you can't now. Right. Like, I mean, I'm not saying you'll ever be able to walk necessarily. No, but right. So I don't know. Again, that's extreme. That's crazy. Hyperbolic. Mm. But again, it's, it's, I think it, that collapsing concepts huge. It is. You know, it's funny. I went to get a, an eye test yesterday to, you know, to get, to look at the glasses. And I thought, I really need to get on to correcting my eyesight. And, and I know you can. Anyway, I went to get my eyes done and I thought, right, I'm going to ask a question just to see which way this swings. I said, so have you ever heard of people doing eye exercises and getting rid of their glasses? And she looks at me and she goes, Oh yeah, you can do that maybe early, like in your twenties. But she says that your age, it's locked in and it'll never change. Nice. That's <laughs> went, impossible. And in like, the past, I would have said, I would have argued and said, well, actually, you know, you haven't seen because apparently Rhonda Byrne from The Secret corrected her eyesight, and so did the guy from Mind Valley, um, Vision Lakiani. And I thought I'm going to go and check that out, and then start to look at because I know I can correct. I mean, you can correct anything in the body. Right. Yeah, absolutely. If with Again, if you don't believe, then you can't. So, right. but I was thinking, wow. I was at least able to slow down hmm. the progression. I, I was about the, I was, I was happy with that. Like my prescription stayed pretty consistent for a number of years now. But, Gee, that's good. But yeah, I, I need to reverse it. That's what you I need to, re yeah, reverse it completely. Yeah. But I thought, yeah, it's possible. But I thought it's not about age. That's, you've been taught that in your industry yeah. and you believe that. But I walked away and I thought, hmm. I'm actually going to come in. I remember your name. And when I correct my eyesight, I'm going to come back to you. Yep. 
And you'd be like, look at this. Fix my eyes. Look at this person. You liar. <laughs> liar, you. But I have to do it first. I have to do it yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah. spit on them much you want. I know you want. You're a good person. Yeah. That so is awesome. So did Joseph Murphy have any other nuggets to share with us? Well, he really, look, this book is fabulous. It's again, a bit like Neville's Law and the Promise. It's got yeah. stories of person came with this issue. This is what Joseph Murphy suggested. And then this is the result people got. And people sent in letters to him as well. So what I might do, Dan, is we'll do a part two with this just Joseph Murphy book. And I'll find something else for us for the next. Okay. Did he actually like write words on pages or is it just like bits of shag carpet that you flip through that? Yeah, he's just, bit, and... just bits of shag. That's why That's... the book's, a bit, the book's <laughs> like, a bit thick. Yeah. It's it's like three pages of shag. It's great. I, I love the word cosmic. That's so 70s. It, yeah, it I just is love so it. Very, <laughs> cosmic like some foul. close encounter of the third kind. Yeah. And, That's yeah. awesome. Where's my so there we go. That's, oh, that's fantastic. I, I love it. Topic for today. It was good. Well, Anya Vivarelli, thank you very much, by the way, for all you do for all of us. And, uh, and this was a great video. This was fun. Cosmic, in yes. fact. Cosmic. That's exactly There's right. There's apparently a famous pizza place in uh, New York, uh, Cosmic, or D.C., Washington, D.C. It's yeah? been on the news a bunch. Not in a good way, but yeah. it's been on the news a bunch. I'm not going to say any more than Cosmic, but it's funny. <laughs> Cosmic ping pong or something like that. Anyway, um, it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> Anywho. All right. Yeah, we'll weird. sign off and we'll put down below the links too because you and I have both done some YouTubes on collapsing space and time. Yeah. So we'll put the links down below for those of you that want to check that out and learn a bit more about it so you can apply it to your desire of what you really want and use the mechanics of that to just help you hopefully get there a bit faster than 18 months. And that, and the horse don't, do it to, don't do it to go faster because again that works against you but it do, does. No, do it to understand that these are some of the limitations we place on ourselves yes and by closing those down you speed it up so yes you get the uh, i'm glad you brought that up the thing yeah glad really. you brought that up that's a great way to look at it awesome oh, audience i love you cool. and we will do another one in a couple of weeks everybody uh thank you for joining us again bye everyone <laughs>